Hey guys, welcome to another New World video. In today's video, I wanted to address a question I've been seeing crop up more and more lately, and it is a surprising one. I'm not sure if this phenomenon is being caused by the fact that some players are returning, or maybe just new people trying New World, but I have been asked more and more lately, how can I level up quickly? So after searching for tutorials to link them, or other videos, I quickly realized almost everything I've found is way out of date. So I decided to put together a quick guide on how I level up my alt accounts that I use to make extra daily crafting resources very quickly. When I decide I want to make another character, whether to play with friends on a different server region, or on a separate account to make more Asmodium or whatever, my only goal is getting to max level as quickly as possible. And after doing it 5 or maybe 6 times, I think I have it down to a nice rhythm, never taking more than 2 days to get this done. So although I am not claiming this is some ultimate best leveling guide, I am wanting to share my tested and proven strategy for maxing characters as quickly as possible. And also, my hope is you won't make the same mistakes I have made in the past during this process. So let's just get into it. A lot has changed in New World in terms of experience gain and progression over the past few months, with side quest experience being buffed and the required amount of experience to reach level 60 being reduced, and finally they have rebalanced experience to sort of mitigate the grind that once was in your 30s. All of these changes have been great and after testing them all I can honestly say they do make a difference. However, they were not enough to change how I level my characters. So when I first make a new fresh faced level 1 character and I spawn in on the starter beach, my first goal is of course getting the boring quest chain finished up until I reach my first settlement. This is key and can be done in only a few minutes. Don't get sidetracked. Just focus on getting these objectives done as quickly as possible up until you unlock the market board and the factions. Once you have unlocked these two elements of the game, questing is almost completely behind us. One thing I want to point out early in this video is that in New World Leveling Guides, the main piece of advice that was always given was to take the XP gains from territory bonuses when you would level your territory standing. I want to say right now, don't do this. It's a trap. There is no way later to respect your territory standing. So wasting these points on something that offers a very very limited boost to your experience in only one territory is a huge noob trap. You will be better investing these points into storage capacity, gather speed and tax reductions. Never buy these experience bonuses that will be useless to you after you hit max level. Another thing that is very important to the speed that you will be leveling is your tools. You will want to try always to have the best tools you can have at your level, upgrading them immediately when an upgrade is available. This will allow you to gather more resources, gather them more quickly, and overall allow yourself to complete the needed tasks at a faster rate. Now, the way we are going to be generating experience and leveling is going to be through the Tambord missions, but not exactly the way it used to be. With the changes to the Azoth system, and with the Azoth being pretty much free now, you will be able to travel virtually anywhere. The only caveat here is that you will have to visit the settlements first in order to travel there, which brings me to the first step of this leveling endeavor. So your first step is going to be to run to the settlements. Super boring I know, but it will save you a ton of time later. And the bonus here is that at low level the experience offered for simply discovering new locations is actually pretty solid, and will give you a couple of cheeky levels while you are building your base for progression later. What I always do is visit all of the easy to reach starter settlements to start. Windsward, First Light, Cutlass Keys, Monarch's Bluff, Everfall, and of course Brightwood. Now that you have unlocked all of these locations and have the ability to quickly travel between them, the most time consuming step of this will begin. If you head to your market boards in these settlements now, you will be underwhelmed. The requisitions offered will provide very small, unimpressive amounts of experience, and you will question if this is truly the best option. However, these requisitions are not based on your character level. Instead, they are based on your trade skill levels of your character. So the first step will be to head out and hit trees, gather hemp, hit rocks, skin basically any skill you have and use it. The objective here is to get all of your gather skills to roughly 100. This sounds daunting, but it isn't. 100 is a fairly easy to achieve middle ground for gather skills that will only take you a couple of hours of playtime. You will also want to focus on your refining skills as you gather the materials. The added bonus here is that you will accumulate a substantial amount of mixed materials that will come in handy when completing your tambor missions later. Another important step in this stage is to always complete your three daily faction bonus missions in the settlement of your choice. This will provide you with a substantial influx of early coin to help fund your faction board requisition completions for items like flux, sandpaper, you may need. Now that you have gotten all of your gather skills to roughly 100 and you are all set, you will notice that the requisitions offered now on the town boards will be higher tier matching your trade skills, and of course now offer substantially more experience for completion. And to the final step for this preparation, head to the market and purchase a few bottles of Azoth, 
with the changes to the travel system in New World. Weight, distance, and faction no longer have an effect on travel, so you will get a ton of travel from even a single bottle. So these will be invaluable for the speed you will now level. In the past, the idea here was, now that you have built up your base skills, you could head to the Tambords in three settlements of your choice, set up a path triangle, and pick up all of the missions completing them by killing rabbits, turkeys, and whatever along the way running between them. This for me at least has changed a little now. I now focus on the missions like potion making, rations, wood, anything I can craft, and I simply quick teleport between all of the settlements, not just completing three. By the time I have completed a cycle of all the settlements filling all of the requisitions, enough time has passed that I can now start again, with a never-ending cycle being created. The added benefit to this strategy is that in the meantime you will be leveling your territory standing everywhere, which will continue to offer you additional benefits in terms of gather speeds, reduced cost to using benches, and more storage space for materials. This is a ridiculously fast way to level now, with some board clears offering huge amounts of experience almost completing entire levels in a single settlement visit. This is only going to become faster and more efficient with the release of the patch in March as well. So if you are planning to start playing, or want a power level in alt, I recommend waiting a few days. Because with the March patch, all of the settlement storages are going to be linked. What this will then do, in terms of speeding up your leveling process, is it will offer you access to all of your materials you have, regardless of which settlement you're in. So no more will you have to jot down notes and keep track of what to grab from Windsward Settlement next rotation to complete something in Cutlass Keys. You will always have access to all of them, being able to complete these board missions from anywhere. And as you complete town board requisitions, making potions, gathering wood, Whatever, you will be leveling your trade skills passively even more, which will then make the missions offered on the town boards provide even more experience. When you start getting really deep into the trade skills, you will start getting offered missions to give up 20 star metal ingots or 25 weird wood for a requisition. When you encounter these, you have a choice to make. Some will recommend never doing these. I, on the other hand, love them. Yes, these materials are valuable and can easily be sold on the market, making you 300 to even 500 gold, and some days maybe even more. But the amount of experience you receive in these cases can be upwards of a quarter of a level, just for that one turn in. So is 300 gold worth the amount of experience it would take 5 or 6 world quests to generate? For me, yes, absolutely. 3 to 500 gold is not a lot in this game, as you will learn later. But jumping up almost an entire level from turning in 4 or so of these quests is huge. This is not exciting, and not even really fun. Although, honestly, I do enjoy it sometimes. When you get a really nice town board that will give you a full level when you complete it, simply in one click, it feels amazing. Although it isn't fun, it is the fastest way I've found to level up, if leveling up is your only objective. Now, before I end this video, there is an important thing I should say. At the moment, New World offers very, very little in terms of endgame play outside of simply farming expertise bumps and leveling your armor and weapon slots. So the leveling experience is currently the entire game. So although this is fast, it is not recommended for new players. You will max your level quickly, probably in a day, and then most probably quit a week later, due to the lack of content. So my honest recommendation is unless there is a clear reason for you to complete your leveling process quickly, like an alt for crafting as I said, don't do this. Take your time, do the side quests, do the main quest, explore, gather, craft, and do all of the expeditions. This played a huge role in why New World is in the state it is in today. For some weird reason I fail to understand, people have this weird desire to max level in every game three days after buying it. I mean, do you go to see a movie and fast forward to the last 15 minutes only to watch that, then walk away saying the movie felt boring and quick and empty and I didn't understand the stupid story? So guys, yeah, that's my leveling up fast strategy I use. It's pretty simple, but honestly, take your time and just have fun while playing. Then you will reach endgame, and there will be maybe an endgame to reach. Okay guys, I hope that helps answer that question that you've all been asking. And as always guys, Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.